Welcome everybody uh, to a brilliant Safer Internet Day 2021. Uh, my name is Alan, as you can see from the little uh, graphic below me about there. Um, I'm a discovery partner. I have been doing that role for around about five years with three. And I'm really proud and delighted to um, be part of Safer Internet Day. Um, it's something that we usually do every single year. Um, but this year we're going to be doing something completely different. Hence why you can see me on the screen right now. So the name of the game today is to provide you guys who are tuning in uh, to have some really cool uh, digital skills. These are going to be solely based around keeping your kids um, safe whilst they're online. That is the spirit of Safer Internet Day. Uh, many, many organisations do get involved in this. They all do different things, um, but obviously our remit is all around digital skills. So if you're a parent, you're a teacher, whatever, um, definitely stay tuned because we have got some great things lined up for you. Um, you've got an amazing set of tools that are in your devices already. I've got a whole range of devices here sitting in front of me um, and we're going to go to that in just a moment. But it's really about setting the tone and setting the scene and making sure that actually your children are probably using quite a lot of screen time at the moment, as are mine. Um, how can we take control of that? What can we do to make sure that we understand what they're doing, um, when they're doing it, and how for how long for as well? So that's where I come in, and that's where I'm going to really showcase some really cool stuff. So I'll just set up a little bit of a, an agenda of what the plan is for you guys today. As you can see, this little graphic popping over on the side, um, just over on this side. <laughs> this side is always back to front for me. Um, so first of all, we're going to be spending around about 10 minutes on each of these sections, starting off with um, the brilliant Family Link by Google. Um, it's an app that I use myself all the time, and that's great. So I'm going to showcase that. Then we're going to jump into some of the Apple technology, and we're going to look at um, screen time on uh, on the OS system. So whether you've got an iPad or you happen to have iPhone, doesn't really matter because we can look into um, all the variations of screen time and set up some restrictions there as well. And then we're going to spend another 10 minutes looking at Android restrictions. That will include us looking at the Play Store and looking at a little bit of uh, digital well-being or the balance of time on your phone. And then, really important, we've got an opportunity for you guys to really get involved with our Q&A session. So I'm going to call it out right now. Um, if you've got any uh, questions in relation to keeping your kids safe online or there's some key digital skills that you'd like to learn that will really encompass that, then do start using that chat function um, over on the right hand side as you're looking at the screen. As you can see, they'll be put in there and then my colleagues are going to feed those questions through to me throughout the session. Um, and I'll do my best to answer them, but even better, if I can go one step further and we've got the time, I'll show you exactly how to put some of those skills into practice. So without further ado, let me get uh, my webcam up and running and I'm going to start to showcase what Google Family Link um, looks like. I've got a couple of devices here and I've got my iPad. So we're going to move the iPad out of the way for a second. It's not irrelevant at this point. There are some real key things that we can do. Um, but Google Family Link is absolutely great because it allows you to have major controls of your devices. Um, I've got two. I've got my device. I've got my son's device here. Um, like I say, this is something that I use all of the time. So um, I'm going to just caveat this in, a, in such a way is that if you happen to have purchased a um, relatively new Android device, Family Link is often pre-programmed at the start of it. So it might say to you, is this your device or is this a child device? Um, and it will take you through the steps of using Family Link at the start. If you've got a slightly older Android device, don't despair because what this actually allows you to do is go into um, the usual methods, in this case, the Play Store, and you can actually go and search for it and you can download it. Now, there's one thing to point out. If you are doing this for the first time, um, I'll raise this up in just a second. When you search for Family Link, and let me just start typing that in here, um, it will actually showcase two variations of the app. So if we just lift it up here, I've got one at the top that says Family Link for Parents. Um, that wasn't supposed to happen. Let me just show you that again. Live feed technology. Let me just show you that. There we go. Family link for parents. That's that one. That's actually something I've already got installed on my device. And then if I was to go further down, you'd also notice there's one for teenagers and for children as well. So 
in this instance, there's two iterations of the app. So if you are the parent, that's the one you're going to want for your phone, which is what I've got here. And then equally on this particular device, which is my child's device, I have the Family Link app on here as well. So um, it's all located in, in here. So what I want you to do is I want you to grab your devices. If you've got an Android device now, this is brilliant for you. Like I said, if you happen to have an Apple device, we're going to look at that in just a few minutes time. And then we'll go back to um, some of the other things you can do on an Android device. So we're going to open this up. And then what happens is, is that if you do happen to have um, more than one child linked to your Google account, um, then they will show up here. So I've effectively got two portals. I've got one for Evan, Evan and I've got one for Gareth as well. Um, Gareth is actually a colleague of mine, so he won't thank me for doing this. But Evan is my son. And it's brilliant how this works, because once you have it set, once we go into it, it will give you a portal of different things that you can do. So, for example, that's him there. I can go ahead and I can manage some of the key settings that are available for Evan. I'm just going to quickly scroll through this so you get a real feel for all of the different things. It will give me a, uh, an amount of feedback in terms of activity time. So at the moment, as you can see from here, it tells me that um, we've got TikTok. We've used some browser, which you would have done for his schoolwork. Um, and we've also got Chrome. The device is currently showing me as being unlocked. Um, I know that I've got the device here, so I know it's definitely unlocked. And then equally, I've got some limits here. So I can actually set daily time limits on how long he can spend on his phone. So this is like an overarching, uh, an overarching control of all of this combined. So that's pretty cool as well. We've got a bedtime option. This is when the device is unusable. Um, so we can go in and we can schedule time when there's time out. And then we also get a view of when apps are being installed here as well. Now, the great thing about Google Family Link is if the, Evan decides that he wants to download an app, rather than actually going straight onto his device, I get a notification on my phone and it says to me, Evan wants to download this. Now, I get the chance to look at the ratings and I can approve it or I can deny it. Um, so it comes up in a form of a notification, but I can also check back here to see if um, I approve. If the device is lost, we can also have a chance at locating it or blocking it if there's no passcode on here. So we've got that here as well. Um, and there's a few other things around the privacy policy. So I think what we do is we'll start off and we'll have a look to different, see different things. Now, there is a location beacon available here. Now, I have switched it off for now. Um, and I've done that purposefully, so you guys can't see my address. Um, that's the way that works. But if you had this live, then the idea is that you can tap on the location beacon and it will go in and it will showcase a map of where this particular device is. OK, and it shows it on the screen. It tells me exactly where that device is. OK, um, and this does this at a regular intervals. So if the device was lost, we can get to see where it is. Now, occasionally, of course, we do worry a little bit about um, where our children are. So if you think about rites of passage, maybe um, when the children are at school, if they're maybe in year five, year six, looking to get their first smartphone. And as a parent, you're a little bit concerned about letting them walk home on their own. Then that will then give you that feedback that you need to try and understand where um, they are or, or at least where the location of the phone is. But. Hopefully they've got that on them. You will exactly know where they are. Now, this is something here where it comes to activity limits that I really like because this allows me to jump on in and take a look at all of the different apps that are actually installed on this particular device. OK, and we can get a real good feel for how much time is being spent on all of these different apps. Now, it populates in different ways. So as you can see, let me just bring that down again. It populates uh, today's activity, which I can see. I've got yesterday's, I've got the last seven days, and I've also got the last 30 days. So from a habit point of view, if you believe that your children are spending too much time on certain apps, you can go in here and you can have a little look. So for example, if I go in the last seven days, I can take a little look. And it shows me that the web browser on this device is on his device, sorry, this is information provided by this. His web browser is being used most of the time. We've also got things like WhatsApp, where he's maybe chatting to his friends. 
that gives me a time limit on that. TikTok, there's definitely too much going on there. So we might need to do something a little bit about that. Um, and there's some games and some other things on here as well. So you get that constant feedback of all of the different apps that have been used over that period of time. So if you did feel like you needed to set some limits, then quite simply, it works really easy this, we can actually go over up to the top here and we can tap on limits. And this will allow, allow me, it will show me every single app that there is pre-installed on this device. There's loads of different ones as you can see. And then there's an hourglass that appears over on the right hand side of each of these particular apps, just like so. Um, so for example, if I was worried about this TikTok thing, which I can see here, it already tells me that the daily limit has been reached. So what I can do is I can go into it and I can actually change limits. So if I felt that one hour a day was too much and therefore it wasn't the right thing for him to be doing, I can then scroll it down and then maybe change it to 40 minutes, for example, and then I can save that. And then immediately that information is then transferred onto the child's device and it's set on there. And we should be able to see that in just a moment because it's designed to give the child that level of feedback. So we'll go in in a minute, we'll take a little look at that and see what shows up on this device. Now, the other thing that I can do is I can go in and I can do like an overarching limit on the time of when this device is or how long this device is being used for. Um, and the way it goes, I go into edit the limits and I can choose on a day to day basis of how long this particular limit is. So as you can see on the settings here, I've got roughly two and a half hours um, on each of the weekdays and there's no limit on the weekends. Um, what I do think about be all the time is the well-being. So at school at the moment, because we're home teaching, there's a lot of screen time. Um, so I do have my concerns naturally about the amount of time spent on screen for um, schoolwork, how much time is um, useful or how much time is, is the right amount of time to spend on your own devices. There is no hard and fast rules and I will confess I'm not the internet or the phone police. Um, it's just my gut feeling about parenting. I have always felt that two and a half hours was probably a decent limit, like an upper limit, but you don't have to stick with that. You can actually touch on any of these and you can reduce those limits. So if I decided that on a Monday, first day of the week, one and a half hours was appropriate, I can dial it in like I've just done here using the plus and minus, and then I'm just gonna tap on save. And that now shows me that Monday has a change limit but I can actually apply that limit to other days of the week if I wanted to. So that's a great little feature built into this particular app. Next, we've got uh, the bedtime setting, um, and that basically means when the device is rendered unusable. So what this says at the moment is that from 7.30 till 7 a.m. in the morning, this device will sit, switch off. It cannot be used, but I can go in. Like I just showed you really with the daily limits, I can go in I can tap on any of these dates and then I might decide that it locks at a certain time, unlocks at a time in the morning. Um, for example, if you know if he had to get up earlier for school, then maybe I'd set that a little bit lower. But it's very straightforward. You tap on the time and then you simply just dial it in using the dial pad just here. And then it will apply the changes to his phone, not to mine, but to his. And like I say, we'll look at that in just a second. So there's another thing I'm going to show you, which I think is like the pièce de la résistance of this app. And I'm sure all of you parents that are watching this right now will think, wow, that is absolutely amazing. Before I show you this, I'm just going to do a quick call out again, just as a reminder for anybody that is um, joining us um, just now. We do have a Q&A session. We are going to take your questions and we'll do our best to answer those as well. My colleagues are on hand to take a look at those questions and feed them through to me. So over on the, on the right of the screen, you should see that there is an ability for you to um, enter your questions. And then at some point, maybe in the next sort of 20, 25 minutes, we're going to go to those questions and we'll answer them for you. So any questions, um, any questions, a great question at the end of the day. So please feel free to pop them in there and we'll do what we can do to answer them. So I did say I'm going to show you a little bit about how this works. So that is the parent device, the one that I just put down there. This is the child's device here. And I've just made a couple of changes on this. So what I'm going to do is just scroll it down a little bit. And then you'll see that it actually comes up on here 
that there is an update from the parent. And that basically says that there's a 40 minute set for TikTok. So I've literally just changed this. Let's just bring it up a little bit so you guys can see that. It says just here, the light's catching that a little bit. Let's see if I can tilt that away. 40 minute limit has been set for TikTok. Um, and there's a one hour, 50 minute set for um, WhatsApp as well. So I've changed these. But what it's doing is it's providing him with that feedback. OK, so we know exactly or he knows exactly what's going on. So he's getting that um, information directly. Now, I said this is the piece de la resistance. This little button here is a bit of a life changer for me. This is like a remote control, if you like. A bit like switching the TV on and off. At the moment, it says the device is unlocked. But if you find yourself in a situation where you're struggling, maybe uh, your child needs to do some homework or some chores or something like that, then this gives you the ability to lock them down straight away. So if you were concerned about them not coming off their devices, we're going to simply tap on um, the unlocked. And I'm just going to show you again. And let's just turn on the screen. Lock now. You just watch that device over there. It should immediately lock it. There you go. Without me doing anything, it's saying there's time for a break. And that now puts this particular device in a situation where the only way it can be accessed is with a parental access code. And that code is given to you on the parental device right just here in the burger menu. Let me just tilt that up again for you guys so you can see it. So on a lot of Google apps, you'll find that there's this little um, uh, menu with three parallel lines. When we tap in that, it will give us the information that we need, including the parental access code here. OK, so hopefully that all makes sense. It's very, very straightforward to use um, and it's a brilliant, brilliant app. So like I say, if you have an Android phone, there's two iterations, family link for parents, family link for children. Child app has the uh, sorry, the child phone has the parent, the child app and your phone will have the parental one. So if you haven't already done it, Get downloading that one. Um, it is a real life changer. Trust me, it makes such a difference to um, the way that I manage, manage my kids' devices. Now, that doesn't rule out Apple. We have an Apple device just here. Um, you can actually, any Google apps that you have, you can still download Google Family Link for parents on um, an Apple device. And what that will allow you to do is control any Google apps on um your child's Apple device, or obviously your child's Android device. Um, so it will give you those levels of control. And in your case, if you were to be doing this, you're going to be looking straight in this one down here. This is the App Store. And you go looking for that and you'll be able to find Google Family Link from the App Store. So what we're going to do now with iOS is we are going to just take a little look to see how you can do similar things using the feature that is um, restrictions. OK, so um, where we're going to do that is actually we're going to be looking at this particular symbol here, the settings menu. I'm going to caveat this in a way that says if it depends on which iPad version and version of iOS software that you have on it as to what this setting is actually called. So if you happen to have an Apple device that's slightly older, it will be called restrictions. If you happen to have a newer device, it's going to be called screen time. But for want of a better word, these things are entirely the same things. So when you open up settings, settings can always be a little bit of a minefield. There's always so much to go through. And I know some people are, are really nervous about going into any settings because touching something, not looking right, you're a little bit nervous about it. You might press the wrong thing. Don't matter. It really doesn't. Just go ahead, have a little look inside um, and you're going to come down on the main menu a little bit until you find screen time. Now, if you've got a, a, a phone from Apple, this won't have a side menu. It will actually just be a menu that expands just down here underneath screen time. But what we're going to do for this is we're going to come over and we're going to take a little look over in this panel, this side here. So you guys will be able to see exactly what it is that we're talking about. So what we get is we get an activity feed um, and this will give us a, a bit of a, a snapshot here. And it's saying that on this particular device, we've got an average usage usage of an hour and 44 minutes a day. Um, this is a work device, so I kind of expect that. Um, but obviously, if you're looking at your own devices or your child device, 
uh, go ahead and have a little look. It shows you uplifts as well. So this one's saying that we've got a 67% uplift, uplift Sorry, from the previous week. Um, so we can gauge really exactly how much we're using it. And then if I press this little arrow over here, this will allow me to see all activity. And this is a little bit like the Android uh, Family Link app that I just showed you from Google a minute ago. And it breaks it down into um, a week by week basis or a day by day basis. Um, and this is saying that we've got Instagram most used in this case. The settings have been most used. And I know this because actually I've been doing sessions today um, with members of the public. And the one that I did mainly was around Instagram. And then today we're looking at um, the settings that you'll find on an Apple device. So I'm all good with that. That's exactly what I expect. But this is great from your point of view because it means that you can actually go in and take a little look and find out what of the apps are being used the most. So it gives you a really good picture and that will give you an understanding of what the balance is as well. Now, before we go into this block of section here, I'm going to just come down a little bit further. And that is I want to highlight exactly what you've got just here. And this is a screen time passcode. So if, there is, if this is not your device, this is a device that your child uses, what you can do is you can go in and tap screen time passcode. Don't do what I do and do one, two, three, four. <laughs> um, I know I'm doing it for this case, but it's something that ideally you're going to be actually setting this up for yourself. Now, it's going to say if you forget your screen time password, you basically use your Apple ID and your Apple ID password, because if you do happen to forget that, then you're snookered, really. There's nothing you can do. So I'm going to skip the Apple ID thing just for now because I don't need it. If I were to come to change any of these limits here, then the passcode comes into play. So it means that if a child goes into the settings and says, oh, my settings, are, my, my iPad's been blocked. I can't use TikTok anymore. It will require a passcode to allow you more time. That means they've got to put that passcode in to get beyond that point. So that is brilliant. The other thing that you can do is that Apple devices actually have a family sharing setting. And a lot of people believe that the family sharing setting only carries across apps. So what I mean by that is if you were to download an app on one device and yet you've got four other Apple devices in the family, this actually safeguards you having to pay for a download on each one if it is a paid for download. So here, when it comes up for screen time for family, it uses the same connectivity but if I then was to press on this, it would allow me to go through and I would be able to then join. If I don't have a child account on here, I can create one from this point as well. So as an example, if I go on to create a child account, it basically says this is a purposeful thing for if your, excuse me, if your child is up to 13 years old. You can click on next and then it will take you through these particular settings. How old is your child? And then you get to set up um, an account for them through this as well. So I'm not going to do that because that's something um, you guys hopefully be able to do in your own time. I want to show you more so the virtues of these settings that you've got here. And you'll understand um, exactly why I'm going to show you this. So downtime is great because downtime is just the same as what I showed you on Google Family Link. This means it renders the iPad unusable for that period of time. So as you can see, it's now asking me for my passcode. The most difficult passcode ever to crack has just been typed in. What I can do is I can make sure that I've got downtime the same for every day from seven till seven, or I can customize my day. OK, so if I go into customize, I can treat every single one of these separately. So, for example, if I didn't want it to lock down so early on a Saturday, you know, because school not, there's no school the next day, then I can do that. And that's automatically saved just here, as you can see. So it's, that is a very straightforward feature. And what we know already is that when it comes to seven on uh, Tuesday, because it's Tuesday, then we will not be able to use this device because downtime is switched on. Now, I do have this question. It's been asked of me several times. It's like, oh my goodness, if downtime switched on, but suddenly I need to use the iPad, what do I do? It's just the passcode. You type in the same passcode as you set for yourselves, and that will then unlock the downtime settings. So it's very straightforward to do. Now, 
Uh, the next thing, what have we got? We've got um, limits to provide for different apps. And I think this is a really brilliant feature because when you go into it, you can go in and you can choose the limits. Now, what I love about this particular feature in Apple devices is that it, it puts all of your apps into segments. So it kind of puts them into like little pots, if you like. Um, and I can go in and I can actually be really specific about the apps. Um, so, for example, I'll give, I'll give you a bit of a, an insight into this. It's like this might be your only device that you've got at home. And this might be a device that you need to use for educational purposes, going on to things like Microsoft Teams for schoolwork, Google Classroom, etc. And you need to have time allocated for that whilst your child is doing their schoolwork. However, when it comes to um, things outside of that, for example, games, entertainment, um, and all the other things that it lists down here, then ultimately you can go in and you can select each one. So I might say, look, all my creative apps, no, let's say games, because that's been a, probably a bit more realistic. All my games apps are going to be locked down for a period of time. Okay, so I'm going to put those restrictions. If I wanted to be more specific, rather than pressing that little circle, I can tap on games. Oh, there's no games on here. That's why that wasn't working. Let's tap on creativity. There we go. So I've got all of these apps that are creative. So, for example, if I didn't want, um, let me have a think about this. If I didn't want stop motion animation, I mean, I don't think I'd really want to do that. But if I didn't want stop motion animation to be used all day long, every day, maybe my child's got a penchant for being the next animator of Wallace and Gromit, then I can go in and I can showcase how much time they can do it. And this will be it's quite a great exercise in a way because you might turn around and say, go and create a stop motion app a uh, video, sorry, in an hour. Go on, off you go and let's do it. So what this means now is that I have got stop motion one hour every day. That is the limit. So that means that once that one hour is gone, I cannot be using this anymore. So think about the different apps you might have on your devices, Netflix, things like TikTok. We talked about that earlier. Uh, maybe other social media apps, game apps, for example. If it's a game app, then if you've got any games, this device doesn't have any games. But if you did have, blanket it. You can just simply tap on games. Then you go to next. And then you can decide that actually on a daily basis, one hour of game time. And you can set these individually. So I actually think this is a really great tool so that you can manage remotely your child's activity on their device. I love that. So um, have a little look at that, folks. If you happen to have an Apple device, that is a really lovely feature to try out. I'm going to go on to some of the other bits. But before I do, um, again, I'm quite um, aware that some uh, may have uh, joined us since we've done this. Um, so um, if you have just joined us, guys, you'll probably see over on the right hand side of your screen that there happens to be a Q&A section. So I'd love for you guys to get involved, ask your questions. Um, my colleagues are going to be looking out for your questions. They'll be feeding those to me um, in around about 10 minutes time. Um, and we'll do what we can to answer those questions for you. Um, and um, once those questions do come through, um, if I can showcase on a device exactly what those questions um, have been asked of me, I'll do that. If not, we'll do our best to answer those for you as well. So um, do make sure you go ahead and ask them. If you don't ask, you don't get. I'm a great believer of that. Um, now what we're going to do is look on the other limits that you've got on an Apple device. And in a moment, what we're going to do is switch back on to Android. We're going to go ahead and look at the Play Store um, because there are some restrictions in there that I think are really, really important. So let's go back into the iPad. What we've got is we've got a level of communication limit. So this will apply to things like messaging. It'll apply to things like FaceTime um, and iCloud contact. It normally encompasses other things as well. So if you've happened to download Zoom and other apps um, on here, then it will actually allow you to go ahead and change your communication limits. Um, very important. So allow communication during screen time um, and during downtime as well. So downtime is a blanket normally that it says that this device is no longer usable, but you can actually go ahead and you can override that. So, for example, if you have an Apple device 
um, and you need to make sure that you're receiving phone calls from a certain person, you can either make sure it's set to specific contacts or you can go to everyone as well. Um, we don't really have contacts on our iPad, so I can't show you this for sure, but if you did have specific contacts, it could be um, if this is Johnny's device and mummy and daddy need to contact you, even in downtime, then you can actually specify that you allow that. So again, a great little feature within the screen time settings. The other thing you've got as well is the ability to choose what apps can always be used at any time, regardless, even in downtime. And these will include things like the phone, the messages, you've got FaceTime on your maps. Um, and you can also choose other ones as well. There's all, all of my apps are listed down here. So all, of you, all you need to do is decide which one you're gonna use. So for example, if your email was really important to you, you might wanna add that into an always allowed app. Um, if I wanted to take, I think it's my camera on there. Let me just double check. No, so for example, if I wanted to make sure that I could take photographs at any time, I can press the plus button on my camera, put my amazing passcode in to add that, and you'll see it will list up to the top. So what it means is that even if my device is locked, if suddenly I need to capture an image of something, um, then I can still use my camera. So you can actually add those in and take them away accordingly. OK, the only one you can't remove is the phone. So for emergency purposes, um, even if your device is locked, you can still make a phone call. Um, and that naturally is the right thing to do. So we're going to go in now and this will this will uh, lead me nicely into showing you some of those key features that you have within Android. Content and privacy restrictions. Nine times out of 10, I will guarantee you that parents don't even know this existed. Um, and that is because I've worked in the years over the years with many parental groups and they're like, this is amazing. I wish I knew about this beforehand. And what this allows you to do is actually add some restrictions to various different features on your device. Now, some of them might seem really straightforward. Some of them may not. There's loads of settings here. The ones I'm going to focus on is these three just here. So we've got iTunes and App Store purchases, we've got allowed apps, and we've got content restrictions as well. So I tend to like to go into the content restrictions first because this is potentially the most hard hitting. And when I tap on that, it will show you different content for different types of media. So for example, ratings for United Kingdom, that is set because we have a different rating system to other countries around the world. As you can see, if I tap on it, there is all the list of different countries and they are, well, they're not going to be wholly different, but they will be different in some ways or another. Now, who'd have thought about music, podcasts, news and workouts? Not me, that's for sure. When I first came across this feature, I thought, crikey, my children could be listening to music and it could have all sorts of things in it. Either clean or profanity. So if you are happy to have music playing on your device that might have explicit language, then you would select that. If obviously it's for your children, you can go right in, tap on the clean. And the idea is that from the um, iTunes store um, or any of your Apple Music that you might have already in, uh, installed on your device, this will mean that there will not be anything that has a parental um, advisory rating on it. It will only play clean music. So that filters that out immediately. That is super cool. Music videos. Now I've seen some music videos in my time <laughs> and there are music videos. So you can actually choose whether or not you want music videos to play. So if you weren't um, happy, we just tap on off. Music videos can no longer be played on this. We can look at things like profiles of music. And again, you've got your restrictions here. But these are the other ones that a lot of people don't think about. So for movies, for example, I can jump in and I can look at the um, the classification uh, for our normal films that we see at the cinema or that come up on our TVs. The iPad's the same. We've got unrated. We've got parental guidance. We've got things that are suitable for 12, 15, 18 or anything. And you can scale this up and you can scale it down depending on who's using your device. So for example, if this was my my uh, son's device, I jump onto 12, that means, I mean, he's almost 12. So it means that anything over a rating of 12, he cannot watch. 
So that will be perfect for me, just like so. I can also go and do the same thing with TV shows, as you can see. Um, it, it's a little bit simplified, this one. Clean shows, uh, you can put some caution to it. Um, or I can actually turn them off altogether if I wish. Books, again, one of those things that I just wouldn't have thought about. So um, there are various different places where you can purchase books online nowadays. And you have the ability to turn off explicit books as well. So we're not purchasing anything that's not fit for purpose. And then we can also look at the apps and make sure that the apps are appropriate for the age group. And this works again on the PEGI rating system. Um, so this is the pan-European gaming system. Um, so fours, nines, 12 and 17. So there is obviously a lot of console games which will have a big label on them that will say this is appropriate for this age group. We don't really tend to get that um, here, but what it will do is if you choose like the nine plus option here, when you go into the app store to try and purchase a game or an app, it will say if this is rated over and above nine, it won't even show up. So there's no temptation to try and download it. So again, that's absolutely brilliant. We've got all this other stuff here. Web content is really useful as well. At the moment, this iPad has all of these settings above it, but I can still have unrestricted access when I'm using a web browser. That is not ideal. So again, we can make sure that adult websites, gambling and the other stuff is limited so I won't be able to see that. Or I can actually just choose to say, these are the websites I will let. So for example, I might go onto allowed websites and I'll go, you can use CBBS just like so, and that is it. Or we can have a look at Scholastic. So there's some samples that are given to you here and all of these are meant for an appropriate age rating, but they will be the only websites that you can view on this iPad if you restrict it back to this point. So I actually think that is an absolutely brilliant feature um, to help you manage that safety aspect on time. Um, and really, if you come to think of it, that probably encompasses everything that you should ever need on your iPad. A lot of people don't know because they don't know where to look. But actually, all you're doing, and I'll just quickly run through this again, is you're going into the settings menu. You're going to scroll down a short way until you find the screen time. And like I say, if you've got an iPad, it will come out onto the right. If you don't, if it's an iPhone, it will be listed below. So you're just going to go in. You're going to choose which of the settings you need to adjust. And you can set them like this. Do make sure, though, guys, I did point this out right early on. Make sure you use a passcode on there because it means that if your child's savvy enough to go in to the settings, they will be able to find um, exactly how to change all of those. Okay, brilliant. Now, let's just quickly uh, transition that across again so you guys can see me. We are going to go over and we're going to look at um, the Google Play settings in just a second. Um, before we do that, I just wanted to do a little bit of a call out. And that is, is that... Um, we are still looking to get your questions over in about 10 minutes time. So it's kind of a bit of a 10 minute warning for you. If you haven't already done so, please do so now. And that will give my colleagues a chance to have a look at your questions. Um, and we're going to get those in place so that we'll be able to hopefully answer them or hopefully use some devices to show you how to do that. Say for Internet Day 2021, um, we are actually right now part of a Guinness World Record attempt. How exciting is that? Um, this year, above any other year, um, the Safer Internet Society have tried to ensure that more people than ever before have learned some digital skills about how to keep their kids safe online. And we are very much part of that. So we will keep you updated on that, whether we've managed to help break the world record or not. But um, I'd love to be coming back here at some point saying, yep, yeah, I'm, I'm part of a Guinness world record breaker. Um, so that would be fabulous. Um, I'm hopeful that you've learned quite a lot already with uh, the devices that you've got, how to restrict, actually giving you the power back in your own hands. That is really what this whole session is about. So without further ado, let's have a look at the different settings that you have in um, the Google Play Store. I've got my device here, which I'll show you in just a second. I've also got a brand new device as well, and I thought it'd be quite pertinent for me to show you this um, because this has not been set up with any restrictions whatsoever. So I've got some of the key apps that I would use to start off. I've got my Play Store. I've got some settings where I can go in. 
I can define, uh, define the well balance for this particular device. I've got my family link already set up on that. Um, if I quickly just jump into settings here, um, it depends on which particular Android device that you've got. Now, I will just, again, just mention that on Android 9, that's a version of Android and above, you would have a digital well-being option available to you. Um, and that's what is here. Um, it might have been called digital balance instead as of well-being. Um, but I think well-being nowadays is such an important part of um, our society, you know. The, the fact that we're using digital technology much more than we ever have done before. Um, and you can really use the positivity benefits of digital technology to support your well-being. That's definitely one thing to call out. There's loads of well-being apps available to you, but do actually have a little look. Delve in to some of the data and have a little look at it because it will give you the feedback on the different amount of time that you spend on your phone. There are different modes. So, for example, on this particular device, there is a, um, a focus mode. That means this will automatically give you a little bit of downtime. It gives you a chance to stop apps distracting you. And I think for me, this is such a big part of it. If I looked at my phone on a regular basis throughout the day, I probably get something in the region of three to 400 notifications in a day, which is just ridiculous. Some of the newer phones give you a chance to focus. That means that you're not getting these notifications coming through. Uh, your phone's not bleeping all the time. My phone's always set to silent, by the way. I need that because of the sessions that we run for Discovery. But do have a little delve deeper into your focus mode and see if it's there as part of your well-being. Your parental control is also listed in here as well. This is also a chance to set up Google Family Link from this particular device, but I've already done that on here. Now, let's head into the Play Store. So the Play Store is brilliant uh, because it allows you to set various restrictions. Um, but again, unless you know where it is, it is potentially slightly difficult to find. You remember I mentioned the burger menu earlier on in the session. So let me bring that a little bit closer. The three parallel lines. So bun, burger, bun. And that normally constitutes an additional menu. So here we are. We've got some um, key ones just down here. As you can see, a lot of things going on. One of the things I want you guys to look out for is further down. It's here called settings. And when we go into settings, again, you get another menu pop up. So we need to just sort of scroll through and take a little look at the parental controls just here. Now, this is very much the same as the Apple device that I just showed you. At the moment, it's showing me that the parental controls on this device are switched off. We can turn them on and the same thing happens. Let us use my old faithful passcode. Press on OK. It asks me to do it again just in case I get it wrong. So there we are. Parental controls are on and I can go ahead and I can actually access things like apps and games, films, TVs and books. So who is the phone for? What is your audience? And you can scale this back over and above your Peggy ratings. So again, because it's on apps and games, these will have the same rating system as a game that you'd buy off the shelf for a console like an Xbox or a PlayStation. Um, and again, if this was Evan's phone, I would knock it down to age 12. And that means now that 16, 18 and above are restricted that means these will no not show up in the play store no temptation no nothing so i'm quite happy with that i can press on save i can go ahead i can do the same with films there's loads of choices here um these are again like classifications i think it's the bbc that actually did a classification of these so we've got 18 um 18 r which i think is completely unrestricted um, and then we can allow everything. But again, for a child, let me scroll it back. So I can just do that. Every step of the way, it will say, are you sure you want to do this? So I do get the ability to go ahead and choose each one. We can even look at TV. Again, same sort of controls there. And we've got books, explicit or not. So again, if you're ever concerned about your child going ahead and finding um, apps that... Um, or, or going into like a you know a book book club and, and start downloading books and things like that, 
then parental controls are really important. So that is something very, very useful from that point of view. So make sure you go ahead and you have a look at that. Um, there should also be some other things as well in here. And that is really important. Um, and I'm so I'm, I wanted to show you this because I got caught out once. And it's sometimes if you do get caught out, um, it can be really difficult to try and reclaim costs. But there is authentication for purchases. Now, what this basically means is that you have to um, respond to the purchase. So if you get asked if you want to purchase something, then you can ask it to do it every 30 minutes or you can get it to do it all the time. So anytime you want to buy something, it will ask you to authenticate it. Now, what this actually means is that when that happens, you can't actually accept it until you put the passcode in. So the passcode, that very famous passcode that I've used several times a day, if your child was in control of this device, ultimately what it means is that they would need to put that passcode in or know what the passcode is to actually make any form of purchase. So there you go. That is really straightforward. You'll find that in the Play Store. So that is the place that you'll go if you happen to want to download an app or a game or some music or some movies, burger menu, head down into your settings, take a little look at your parental controls. As you can see, these are now switched on. If I wanted to make any adjustments, I've got to make sure that I know the passcode and then hit OK. And that now means I can make those changes for my child's device. So there we have it. Um, obviously a little bit full on. I understand that for you guys. Uh, we've gone through quite a lot of different settings, but ultimately it was always our remit to make sure that you had some level of digital skills. Hopefully that means now that you've got some of that power back in your own hands. Um, that also might mean that your balance of screen time, your child's screen time, um, making sure that actually this, you know, if you are rewarding your child with screen time, you can actually put a limit on it. And that is right. You've got half an hour off you go. And you know, in your heart of hearts, that once that half an hour is up, that device is no longer working for them. And they get to understand routines and things like that as well. Like I say, the caveat in this is that I'm not the phone police or the internet police. I'm just here to showcase some of the great things that you can do with your devices that you may or may not have already known that are there. But this actually means that it kind of saves you downloading extra stuff. The family link is there on a lot of Android phones already. What I showed you on the Apple devices, there's loads of content built into the device as well, just about the know-how. So I think now is the time for question and a question and answer time. So um, I'm just going to quickly head over and have a look and have a chat with one of my colleagues to see if there's any questions. Let me just have a quick chat with um, Emma. OK. There are a few questions there as well. Excellent. Good. OK. First things first. So let me just quickly pop back. The first question that we had is how long does it take to set up Google Family Link? Well, the best thing that I normally say, go and boil the kettle, make yourself a cup of tea. And whilst you're doing that, um, have a go at the Family Link app. By the time the kettle's boiled, you'll be good to go. It's really quick. It will take you about three minutes. The only thing that will take you a tiny bit of extra time is just finding an email address for your child. That's all it is. But then Google will automatically um, suggest email addresses Based on their first name and second name, um, it will populate some email addresses that it thinks that you might want to use. Um, and it's really the email address is purely there just to give you an account so it can be logged in. Um, and if the account's forgotten, you have a username and a password that you create for it as well. So that is a great question. So good shout out to you. Um, next question. How do you get your children to accept the Google Family Link app? This is an interesting question. This has been asked of me before. So I always think the process that we've gone through in this particular session, when it shows me showing you how to do things on these devices, to get a better understanding of it, I would normally say to you, sit down with your child and go through it together. Obviously, when it comes to the passcode, you flip the phone over or something, you've got to hide that bit because you don't want your child to see that. But I think it, it gives you a nice balance of trust, understanding this is why we're doing it. I talked earlier about rites of passage. So 
Um, although I could potentially say I did this with my own children, is that once they got to year five, we kind of set up that in year six, they would be given the opportunity to walk home from school and walk to school on their own. And part of that process was to say, you're going to have a phone now. You need to look after this phone. And there's certain things that I need you to do. Otherwise, the phone's going to be restricted or be taken away from you. So went through a process of actually sitting down with my children, showcasing how the device works and showing some of the things on there that I need to be on there. Um, things like location sharing. That is something that I've always said to my boys that I don't want that switched off because it renders some of these apps unusable. So, for example, in the Family Link app, it shows location of where that device is. If they turn location services off, then I wouldn't be able to see that. So I think things like that are a really great thing to sit down side by side with your son or your daughter and say, look, these are the things that I'm going to let you do on your phone. We're going to put some restrictions on this and that time wise because I think actually that's the right thing to do. And I think too much, maybe too much of the TikTok stuff is maybe a little bit too much. I'm, I'm told by my colleagues that's very addictive. I've never looked at it myself, but I know my kids like to look at it. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I, I think the two way conversation is probably the very best thing that you can do when it comes to that. And this is a question that I probably didn't want to answer, but it has popped up, so I will call it out. And the question is, how much screen time do you think is a good amount of screen time per day? Um, I'm not going to answer that because I don't think it's right for me to start putting out the suggestions. All I can probably do is say what I've limited mine to. And then there's a the scale, the scale of age group as well. So, you know, it, it's probably one of those questions. I would answer this question with a question and give it back to you by saying, well, how old are your, how old are your children and what do you think? It's most likely to happen. Let's use the current climate as the greatest example. You know, I've been out for a walk today. It's snowing. You know, it's quite deep snow. You'd love to get out with a sledge or whatever and go skiing, uh, go snowing, go sledging. I'd love to go skiing. I've got my words up then. But go out and do that. But then what happens when it's not the time for that? And my children, just to call them out, are on their computers from uh, 8.30 registration. And then they go through to around about um, 10 o'clock. Then there's a break. Then they have another session. Then there's a break. They have a half hour lunch break. Then there's another lesson at school. The tendency for my kids who are 12 and 14 is to go, right, I've done that now. I'm going to pick up my phone and off I go and have some time on my phone. And then before you know it, being I'm sort of working from home, do your daily routines and stuff. It could be five o'clock and, and your children have had five hours on their phone plus five hours school time. You know, that's quite a lot. So the best thing you could possibly do is, is kind of put it to your kids and say, well, look, okay, you've got this device. What do you think is an acceptable amount of time to spend on your phone? Put the restriction on and go, okay, we've agreed to that, both you and I. Um, so you're not going to be upset when your phone then suddenly switches off and, and you're out of time. So I know I've skirted around that and I've answered... Um, I've answered the question with a question, but it's not really my place to answer that per se. So um, you probably need to just take that one back a little bit and, and maybe have a, a, a two way conversation again with your child to discuss what you think is the right thing. And then another question we've got is saying, can you adjust parental controls within apps? So, yeah, again, this is something that comes up an awful lot. And I'm conscious of time. We've only got a little bit. So apps and games. So um, we have done some work in the past with the Internet Matters Foundation. They're a brilliant group. They have loads of key skills that they push out there um, outside and beyond like the normal apps that you have in your phone. So, for example, if your children are downloading games, you might have things like Roblox. You might have things like Minecraft and some of the other ones that are on Vogue at the moment. All of those apps will have parental controls within them. But you've also got to think about social media as well. Social media is not allowed to be social media without some of the restrictive services, things like blocking, things like reporting. You know, these are the key things that we call out when we do online safety um, lessons with a lot of the schools we visit. So this time last year, myself um, and my colleagues, we happened to be on Safer Internet Week in schools and we probably looked after 
a thousand school uh, pupils as well as teachers as well as parents and one of the big thing things came out was um, game time you know the ability to communicate with other people um, the ability to have chat rooms and things like that all of those features have restrictions within them you've got to just go into the settings on each one of those apps so I think we are out of questions. Um, I'll just quickly call out to my colleagues. Is there any more questions, guys? If you can just pop them through onto there for me, that will be brilliant. So um, if there is any more, I will just quickly visit them again. Uh, we've literally got a couple of minutes left. So it's been great being able to showcase some of those key skills to you. I am just going to do a bit of a plug for Discovery. Um, we are very much a small team within the wider business of three. Um, and it is our daily job and our remit to provide people with key digital skills um, that can be from the sublime to the ridiculous. So, for example, a digital skill could be turning a phone on for the first time, sending a text message, making a phone call. Maybe the sort of things we or a lot of people take for granted, but some don't. You know, there's a lot of people out there that don't have access. They don't have the means for technology like these. And when they do, it's like, where do I start? What do I do? We help out. We can do that. And we offer free online um, sessions. We do them three times a day, five five days a week. They are totally free. We have a 20 space on each one. And I'm going to show you in a minute just exactly how you can get involved with that. Um, you can book as many of those as you like, as long as there's spaces. Um, it won't just be me being on those sessions. There'll be my colleagues, Emma, and also uh, Jess. So um, there's the three of us that run those. So... Um, I say from the slight to ridiculous, the other sort of side of the coin is if you want to be better at creating content, for example, for social media, we help you do that. If you want to learn how to do some video editing on your smartphone or your tablet, we allow you to do that. We take you through skills like learning how to do things like Adobe Lightroom and getting the most out of your photographs. We help you do that. Things like maximizing the storage on your phone, we help you do that as well. Our our offering is vast it's really vast and it actually comes from a really good space in the fact that we want anybody that comes into contact with discovery to learn something new and in fact i can guarantee that most people every day do actually learn something brand new um, so it is a great opportunity for you guys to join in so without further ado i am going to show you our discovery web page here we go so if you go to 3.co.uk forward slash discovery, you will find us and what we do and what we're all about. We do have locations. At the moment, we're operating everything we do virtually on sessions via Zoom. Um, but it does showcase a little bit more about us. And on that particular website, there is a booking page. You'll get to see all of the things that we are doing up until the end of this month, including next week where we have got sessions for the juniors. So if you have children at home and you're scratching around wondering what to do with them, then let us take care of them for you because we'll do things like stop motion animation. We'll do some animated adverts. Um, so we've got loads of different stuff there. So it's absolutely brilliant. Uh, and we encourage you guys to get involved. Just going to quickly check. There's no more questions. So I'm going to call it out there and say thank you, everybody, for joining us today on Safer Internet Day 2021. And we hope to get uh we're sorry, we hope to see you all again soon. Um take care everyone and bye for now.